Hi, everybody. This is your Masters of the Universe read-along book. Every time you hear the chime, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now, if you are ready, we will start the story, Battle Under Snake Mountain. Don't forget to turn the page every time you hear the chime. Okay, here we go. Of all the places on Eternia, none is more frightening than Snake Mountain. This is the stronghold of the evil warriors, King Hiss, Rattler, and Tongue Lasher. Few people on Eternia are brave enough to travel to Snake Mountain. The ones who have been there and live to return tell of a terrifying noise that echoes through the caves and of trap doors, prisons, and a giant snake that guards the mountain. Beneath Snake Mountain are miles of twisting tunnels which wind down into the rock below. It is there, in his dark chamber, that King Hiss plans his evil schemes. Come now, if you dare, far beneath Snake Mountain to the room where King Hiss is meeting with Rattler and Tongue Lasher. Let's listen in and see what these three snake men are up to now. Rattler, Tongue Lasher, come forward out of the shadows, ordered King Hiss seated on his throne. I feel better when you are both within my sight. King Hiss's red eyes gleamed, and his muscular green body rippled in the half-light of the torches. He was in his human form, but this was a disguise. He could change at will into a writhing mass of yellow serpents. Tongue Lasher and Rattler stepped forward. Rattler's quick strike head was in its resting position now. He wouldn't dare extend it in the presence of King Hiss. His long tail dragged behind him and twitched from left to right, as it always did when he was nervous. Beside Rattler stood Tongue Lasher. His muscular purple and black body glistened, and his long green tongue flicked in and out of his mouth. Together, the two evil snake men walked slowly forward toward King Hiss's throne. You sent, sent for, for us, us, great king, spoke the two snake men together. King Hiss stood up and stepped forward. From his elevated position, he towered over his evil helpers. He leveled his beady eyes at the two, then spoke. I have a task for you, too. My snake scouts have recently discovered an amazing new cave. It is a natural formation in the underground rock that runs for miles and miles. The bottom of the cave is filled with water, a swelling river which leads many miles beyond Snake Mountain. You too will be pleased to learn where the cave ends. Tongue Lasher and Rattler looked at each other, their wicked eyes filled with curiosity. And where is that skin? Asked Rattler as his long red neck stretched upward slightly. The river cave is directly beneath Castle Grayskull. From that point, we can mount a full-scale attack on the castle and on He-Man. Tongue Lasher grew excited. His slimy tongue flicked in and out faster than usual as he cried, This 
is indeed good news. Prickly, we await your command. King Hiss knew exactly what he wanted his two evil helpers to do. He led them to the cave and ordered, Take this barge and sail the river to its end. Study the caves carefully. Then return and tell me the best way to attack the castle. When you return, the three of us plus an army of snake men will sail back to Castle Grayskull. Then we can tunnel up through the soil and into the castle from beneath. He-Man will be caught off guard and we will capture him. Then Castle Grayskull and all the knowledge it holds will be in our possession. He-Man may have stopped us in the past, but this time we will win. Smiling wickedly, Tongue Lasher and Rattler bowed low before King Hiss, then turned and slithered toward the flat-bottomed barge tied up nearby. They knew that the strong current in the river would carry them to their secret spot beneath Castle Greyskull. Meanwhile, inside Castle Greyskull, He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, paced back and forth across the stone floor. He had been worried all day, but didn't know why. Now, he wondered aloud. I don't know what's the matter with me. For the past day or so, something's been bothering me. Something I can't put my finger on. Over the last few years, though, I've learned to trust my instincts. When I'm in a mood like this, it usually means that something evil is afoot on Eternia. The hour was late, and He-Man was tired after a long and troubling day. No sooner was he in bed than he was sound asleep. While He-Man slept, the evil snake men on board the barge drifted ever closer to Castle Grayskull. Rattler and Tongue Lasher stood on the deck, their legs astride as the giant boat floated through the dark underground cave. How wide the river is now, hissed Rattler as he piloted the barge through a series of small rapids. Standing at the front of the barge, Tongue Lasher held a torch high. Its red glow cast twisting shadows on the jagged rocks which lined the cave. Smaller snakes and serpents whisked silently out of the water and onto the slimy rocks as their two great leaders passed. Before the dawn wakes, He-Man, we will be under Castle Grayskull. Hissed Rattler. Yes. Agreed, Tongue Lasher. And from there, we will find the way that leads to the castle. Then we will return to King Hiss and tell him what we have learned. He will be most pleased. When we all return, he man will be captured and Castle will belong to his big men. The next morning, when he man woke, he felt much better. I'm glad that mood has passed. It must have been my imagination. I see nothing evil. He-Man has many powers, but even the most powerful man in the universe cannot see through stone. If he could, he would have been surprised to see Rattler and Tongue Lasher in the castle beneath his room. 
During the night, they had made their way through the maze of underground tunnels beneath Castle Greyskull. Rattler whispered to his evil friend, Time, Time to go. We must return to Snake Mountain and tell King Yis we have found the way to he private chambers. Tonight we will return with an army of snake men and capture He-Man. As they turned to go, Tongue Lasher hissed, Have a nice day, He-Man. We'll see you later. And we'll have a little surprise party in your honor. <laughs> Once Rattler and Tongue Lasher were back at Snake Mountain, they told King Hiss what they had learned. The evil king of the Snake Men seemed pleased. You have done well, very well indeed. And He-Man knows nothing of your digging under his room. Are you certain of that? The all-powerful He-Man will be totally surprised by the little visit we have planned, answered Rattler. I can assure you of this. Splendid. Hiss the king. What are we waiting for? To the barge. By this Time tomorrow, He-Man will be my prisoner, and Castle Greyskull will be under the control of the Snake Men. So, after calling together a small army of Snake Men, King Hiss, Rattler, and Tongue Lasher made their way through the secret underground tunnel, which led to the River Cave. He-Man spent a busy day rock climbing and practicing battle maneuvers with man-at-arms. For the first time, He-Man ignored his instincts that warned him of danger. That was an error He-Man would soon regret. For later that evening, when he was sound asleep in his bed, King Hiss's snake men loosened the stones of He-Man's floor and pushed one stone free. Silently, King Hiss, Rattler, and Tongue Lasher crept to He-Man's bedside. Using a special venom poison, King Hiss rubbed a few drops of the fluid onto He-Man's hand. Soon, the most powerful man in the universe was helpless. He was in a deep trance and paralyzed. Carry He-Man to the barge, shouted King Hiss. We will return with him to Snake Mountain. Once I have him in chains there, we can begin our conquest of Castle Greyskull. Although He-Man's eyes were open, he was helplessly paralyzed and could not move or speak. But his brain was still functioning as he thought, I... I... can't let them take me to Snake Mountain. I've got to fight their poison and get my strength back. But it was no use. King Hiss's poison was too powerful. For now, He-Man was a helpless prisoner. Rattler and Tongue Lasher carried He-Man to the barge and tied him up. Then they set sail for Snake Mountain with their prisoner. King Hiss taunted He-Man, saying, Where is your power now, mighty He-Man? Gone. Now I have the power, all the power. <laughs> but even as he spoke, 
King Hiss was making a terrible mistake. He was underestimating He-Man's power. Already, He-Man could feel the effects of the venom poison starting to wear off. And he thought to himself, I'll pretend to still be under the poison's effect. It will take several hours to reach Snake Mountain. By then, I should be wide awake and have all my strength back. Old Fangface and his friends will be really surprised when I make my move. So, holding very still, He-Man pretended to be unconscious during the trip back up the underground river which led between Castle Greyskull and Snake Mountain. His eyes were still closed when he felt the barge being tied up to the dock, and he knew they had arrived beneath Snake Mountain. At that moment, He-Man heard King Hiss shout to his snake men, Take our guests to the dungeon and chain him up. <laughs> I will visit him tomorrow and show him how we treat our visitors here at Snake Mountain. It was then that He-Man sprang into action. Not so fast, you scaly serpents! He shouted as he jumped up. I'll be checking out of this snake hole a little early. What? He-Man is awake! Screamed King Hiss. God sees him! The moment King Hiss realized that He-Man was awake, he shed his skin, revealing the many snakes beneath his outer skin. Rattler coiled his head back, ready to strike, while Tongue Lasher's dangerous tongue flipped out angrily. King Hiss and his evil friends were ready to fight. Try it, you snakes! Yelled He-Man as he leaped off the barge and began battling the snake men. He-Man had all his power back now, and he was angry. As the snake men attacked him, he easily picked them up and threw them into the cold water. Rather than fight He-Man personally, King Hiss, Rattler, and Tongue Lasher hurried away into a tunnel that led inside Snake Mountain. There, they could hide and be safe. Once he had defeated the Snake Men, He-Man untied the barge and sailed away from Snake Mountain. As the barge drifted away from the mountain, He-Man gave a mighty yell. Ah! He-Man's shout was so loud, it caused a small earthquake. The stone walls of the river cave collapsed in a thunderous roar. That will seal up the cave forever, said He-Man as the barge floated away safely. King Hiss and his snake men won't be using this cave for a long, long time. <laughs> I should have never doubted my own feelings when I sensed danger. That's one mistake I won't make again. <laughs>